Hi, this is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com, specializing in the sales, service, and designs for outdoor patio heating equipment. Here we have a residential application. In this application, the customer is looking for two different areas of heating. So we have this upper area here. And by the way, I should say that this is in a very cold climate, um, I believe up in uh, Colorado area. Um, so we have the dining space up here with a cook uh, cooking uh, location over here and then also just a simple reclining um, uh, space over here I believe they said there's going to be a TV set on this side here and this is gonna be a fireplace um, set up there um, and um, up here you might notice that we have uh, some uh, ceiling or lighting up here and then also we have some doors that swing outwards so that might be a um, big consideration especially how far out this door swings and then also it's as precise location you know that we need to kind of look at that um, in detail um, on the second floor there are can lighting throughout this space here but I don't have the actual dimensions of that so um, we also need to consider that and um, see what we can do with regards to the placement of the heaters so let's go ahead and look at the overall dimensions of these two spaces this upper floor here you can see I have um, the wall to wall is um, 11 feet 7 inches but we're really only needing to heat up the uh, dining space here obviously and then um, ceiling height I have at uh, 8 foot 9 and a half inches off the floor and then overall length over here, you can see you got uh, 14 feet 11, so roughly 15 feet. There is a, an additional um, foot and a half there, roughly. All right, so let me turn up. Oh, let's see if we can go down here real quick. And um, I think I have the overall height of this. Let's see if I have it here. Yeah, nine feet. And so I don't have the exact measurement of this, um, but I have it at nine feet and then 15 feet wide. And then the overall space is going to be less than 14 feet. Um, I have that from this edge of the fireplace over to this um, pilaster here. So um, it'll be a lot less. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe 10 feet wide in that space there. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's look at uh, what we can do as far as heating is concerned. So I've placed uh, two of the uh, CD5024s. Now I know the customer had requested uh, the possibility of placing the heaters in a flush mount situation. Um, that is possible, but that I believe the beams are going in this direction up here. So the best footprint of heat I can get would be placing the units this way, and that's why I have it like this. Um, now one big issue again going back to these doors is I need to have a clearance um, below the heater of 18 inches and so with these doors swinging out um, I'm not sure of the exact measurement again so you can see I'm penetrating the door about you know two inches here um, so if these doors are a little bit shorter this would work out fine if not, we may have to just move the heaters in um, uniformly, meaning that we'd have to kind of make both of them come in a couple inches just to make them look uniform within the space. Um, so that would be that. And let's see if there's anything else I need to mention about that. I don't think so. We do have six inches of clearance above just using the OEM brackets. Um, let's go ahead and look at the footprint of heat for this space here. Now you can see that I'm not really penetrating this um, section here ideally because I'm trying to center, centralize the heaters themselves just so that they look more appropriate in the space. So um, you could move the heater over but then of course we have the can lights up here that we want to consider. Um, and again these are just lined up with the can lights there. But overall you get a good footprint of heat. Um, being that this is in Colorado in a very cold climate at times, the uh, I believe I mentioned these are 5024, so these are dual element CDs. Um, they may not be hot enough for you know rather colder climates. Um, I would say that in the 50 degrees and above, you will um, appreciate this heat. 
um, but below that you may not. It's just an individual um, um, perception of heat. So um, again, it's it's just uh, to prolong the uh, period of time that you can actually spend outside. So all right, so that would be the two up here. 5,000 watts, you might want to control them. You might want to just put a duplex switch on them so you can switch one bulb on, one bulb off. And we'll leave it at that. All right, so down here, um, you can see I have two of the 6,000 watt units. And um, let's see if I have the dimensions on here. Do not, let me just put that quickly up here. So dimension wise, I believe I have them just spaced at, um, Eight, you know, eight feet apart, so they're central in this space between this wall here and this wall here. Um, you can see that the clearance below is met without an, any issue, and there's no issue with the uh, side wall over here as well. And then the footprint of heat, you can see that we have a fairly well footprint of heat. Now the customer is going to have a fireplace here, but I don't really... Uh, calculate in a fireplace as far as its um, output. Um, these heaters are roughly 20,000 BTUs of output where a fireplace, um, you know, I don't have that calculation so I don't know that information but they're generally not as powerful as um, the electric heaters or gas heaters for that uh, matter. Um, you could put uh, gas heaters up here it would hang down a little bit further a 34,000 uh, BTU heater would require uh, 14 inches of clearance above and then the heater itself would be 8 inches so it's 21 I believe inches from the ceiling down and that would be kind of low on a 9 foot ceiling height so um, but as you can see we got uh, sorry about that we got uh, good you know coverage for the majority of that space as i mentioned the customer um, has this as a seating area and this is more of a walkthrough pass through area so um, and again uh, i think the joists in this application come from this direction um, so it's going um, perpendicular to the distance of the uh, layout that I have here so I think this would be a better footprint of heat for this space and that's why I have them on a uh, ceiling mount or flush uh, surface mount you might consider and I think there was a, one more thing I wanted to bring up about this and Oh, and yeah, these are 6,000 watts, so they're longer units, um, 61 and a quarter inch, I believe is what they are, and the heaters above are 39 inches in length, so I like the longer units, they give a more uniform heat pattern throughout the whole space, so that's why I'm choosing the 6,000 watt units for this space, and um, I'm trying to condense on this one here, just the, the appearance of the heaters up here, and a 5,000 watt would be appropriate uh, up there. All right, well, I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application, feel free to send us an email to designs at patioheat.com. And if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up, we really appreciate that. We don't advertise, we don't monetize, and YouTube won't put our videos up unless you support us in that way. Thank you very much, and have a great day.